All right, hey, this is Act 2 of the podcast. We're getting right back into it. If you missed Act 1, go back and listen to that thing. Otherwise, this isn't going to make any sense. Okay, see ya. And welcome in fans, friends, lovers, country uh, club members to Act Number 2 of the Eric Zane Show podcast. Like, what is what is the deal? Why Why do we do it this way? Well, it's because I have the radio staff meeting that I have to be part of. That's, uh, that's part of it. I'm like, yeah, of course, staff meeting. Just like old times. I, I, like, being, I like being on a team. So I've discussed many times about how Q100 is a throwback radio station. Unlike anything else that exists on the air today. They actually have employees. Like, there's as many employees on Q100 than there are at iHeart and Grand Rapids. And that iHeart cluster is like five or six radio stations. Q100 has that the same number of employees, and it's just one radio station. So, uh, it's just very, uh, very old school. And I, and I like it that way. I really do. But I just figured out that there's something that, uh, I, I have never heard before. And I'm, I'm really interested in seeing how it goes. Have any of you, uh, ever seen that movie, um, with the same people that do like best in show and waiting, uh, and, and, the, and the film I'm referring to is waiting for Guffman. This is one of those improvisational Eugene Levy uh, and that blonde chick who's hilarious. They always improvise their parts. Anyway, waiting for Guffman about them getting ready to do a play. Well, on Q100, they do a radio play. They do a Christmas radio play. And what they do is they announce on the radio, all right, uh, if you want to fill the part of... uh, King Joseph auditions. They have auditions and people come out to the, like in the public come out for the auditions and they audition for parts of a radio play. And so, uh, then they had the directors, which would be staff members. Uh, this one lady in particular, her name is uh, Joe Marie. She is, uh, she has the theater bug, if you will. And so she is instrumental in picking the parts and so back in the old day, radio dramas, they would, they would gather people up around microphones and they would all have their scripts and there'd be like a, a Foley artist making sound effects. Picture like War of the Worlds, you know, the old radio play Orson Welles that was so well done for the time that it actually convinced people who were listening that there were aliens attacking. Q100 does a Christmas radio play. And I cannot wait to hear this. Now, I don't, I wasn't paying attention to get the exact date and time, but I need to be listening live when it happens because I want to hear it when it's live, live. Because what they do is they like clean it up after and edit it to make sure that there's any, like in case. You get some guy who's playing the part of like, uh, you know, one of the three Kings and he drops a F bomb or something on there. They're going to go and clean that up, but you want to, you want to get it live. Like if he says, all right, here's your frankincense, baby Jesus, go fuck yourself. You know, you want, you want that to be 100% genuine. Uh, That's what I want to live for. That's what I'm living for in this, this radio play. God damn, that is awesome. So uh, I cannot wait to actually be part of it. When I say be part of it, just listen to it from here. My God. And I have uh, never been at a radio station that has done anything like this. This went out with the dinosaurs. But they, they brought it back. And they've been doing it for years. Doing this radio play. Holy shit.
By the way, Linda, I see uh, your uh, addition to the Great Food Giveaway, and that makes us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 of you have donated to the Great Food Giveaway. And, you know, I don't want you feeling bad about that. That's That was a very kind, generous donation. And aren't you, like, without a job? Aren't you unemployed? Are you still unemployed? And you're donating your time? Yeah. No more. Stop. Okay? That's a lot. Bob says, did you hear about Greggy's big announcement this morning? Easy. No. What is it? Please. The floor is yours. I'm looking at the uh, subreddit, seeing if there's any comment about this. Uh, He says, I emailed it to you. Uh, Let me check it out. We can check it out together. I have not seen this. Um, Problem. I am blocked on their Facebook. So maybe it'll be on their Instagram. Then I can do it. Don't say it yet because I want to be surprised, you know. Let's see. What could it be? Okay. Oh, I think I know what it is. The big announcement is he's getting a tattoo. Oh, cool. That's the big announcement is getting a fucking tattoo. I was hoping it was going to be something sexy, like he's got cancer. That sounds stupid to make such a big deal over, but whatever. Um, anyway, it's a six-hour session tomorrow. Okay, good. Uh, anyway, uh, this week, by the way, speaking of, uh, of that, I, I want to get into this. Chris made a suggestion that I, I, I want to read to you, and I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, He has a a wonderful idea. Chris writes, thanks for keeping me alive. Easy, I want to thank you for uh, keeping me from falling asleep while driving home. I now listen to Who Are These Free Beers on my weekly Friday night drive home. I typically sleep from 2 a.m. to 6.45 a.m. because of my kids and my schedule. Woof. This causes me to be extra tired come Friday night. By listening to you and Ben do that show, it helps me stay awake on my 45-minute ride. So thank you. I have an idea, though, for you. If you think it's worthy enough, and this is worthy enough, this is great. He says, EZ, the college football bracket is coming up soon. That's like the 12 teams in the playoffs. And I thought, how great would it be if you created a bracket of the Free Beer and Hot Wings worst segments of the year bracket for listeners to vote on? It might piss them off because they do brackets like that all the time, and it might grab the attention of their listeners. If word gets out, just a thought. I would have in, I have been enjoying the daily podcast. Keep up the great work. Maybe try not to piss off the lovely wife next week. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, and that is let's see Wednesday, I that was the last incident. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If I make it through today, that is five days without pissing off my wife. I love the idea of the brackets. So you could have like what goes in the fridge, taking on the great candle debate. In order to make this possible, 
Uh, I don't know anything about how to how to make that type of website or landing page online. Do any of you or anyone listening, either uh, to the I mean, watching, listening live on Twitch or listening to the audio podcast thereafter, have expertise on this? So basically, um, when you click on whichever one, you would cast a vote. I would love it if that were a thing. I don't know how to do that. I mean, if I did try to do it, I probably could piece it together, but it would look like fuck. So if you could reach out to me, if you have expertise in this field and I could help you with logos and, and, uh, and with the actual segments, um, as they're named, and then the audience could vote. And we could do it just like the football playoffs coming up for college football. If that doesn't work, we can always do it for the NCAA basketball tournament in March. But I think that's great, Chris. It's a wonderful suggestion. Chris is part of the growing army of audience members who um, regularly were listening to that show and then have given it up entirely. Bob says, if only you had a sponsor who specializes in IT. Well, that what's tricky about that is um, I don't, not for design. Therefore, getting this, they can help me at Blue Frost get my show out to the world. But when it comes to actually uh, an online uh, landing page designed appropriately, uh, that's not their forte. Molly suggests that when it comes to me upsetting my better half, she should start some kind of sticker system. And once it's filled up, he gets a, he gets a hug. Yeah, that's, that's probably great. I mean, if she were to like have it where I get to have sex with her, it would only be disappointing for her. Linda says you could do a poll on your Facebook page. Yeah, I could keep it that simple. You know, honestly, um, like uh, round one, uh, free bear worst segment playoffs. Just even posting it like that might be the simple uh, uh, turn on this uh, to have people be participating and still get the idea across of what we're trying to do, and that is annoy the fuck out of them. Matt says Greg's tattoo is probably tally marks of all the sex he has. I am curious about what the tattoo will be. You know, I can't... um, I think this is all uh, part of a, a greater thing about Greg uh, since he has you know started this whole metamorphosis, the whole change of life thing uh, with the uh, losing the one wife, the one wife leaving him and then him um, being with this this new wife. you know a lot has changed. Uh, she has sex with him like all the time and that's like really different, I guess, than what he was doing before, according to him. Um, There's also the Tesla purchase. There's also the new kids. There's also the stupid hair. Um, And then now, and also the uh, drug usage, which is something that did not happen. So there's that. Uh, Not to mention... The tattoo. That makes me want to get uh, Coleman on here to actually ask about this without getting him in trouble. I don't want Coleman to get in trouble. Coleman works a regular job, so I don't want to interrupt him during that. 
this is the former um, husband of Greg's Greg's wife. So basically, when Greg goes down on his wife, he's like sucking Coleman's dick. Your call has been forwarded to voicemail. We'll have to circle back for that, as Jen Psaki used to say. How about that? Molly says I was listening back to Friday's show and was cracking up at the X days without incident sign referring to me. Kenny says his new wife probably said he'd look good with the tattoo, so now he thinks he has to get one and make a big deal about it. I can't, uh, if I were to get a tattoo, I I don't think I, um, there's anything other than maybe like a Detroit Lions logo or Dan Campbell's face uh, I would like on my body. And even that's kind of, I don't know. I mean, I got the one tattoo and uh, I didn't, I didn't want a tattoo. So, you know, I think it would be kind of phony of me to suddenly like, yeah, now I want a tattoo. This tattoo that I have on my arm, which some of you don't even know about because you weren't around back in the day when that happened. This tattoo has caused so many people to look at it and stare and wonder, what the fuck am I looking at? It's me. It's a tattoo of me from the Mr. 10 contest. You'll have to look it up and get the background on your own. I don't feel like talking about it now. Maize and Blues says last week was an epic week on the Eric Zane Show podcast. You know, it seems like this show is getting more and more epic as each day passes. I'm not going to lie. It's fan-fucking-tastic. Let's enjoy it while we can. Because before too long, it's going to be bigger than anything. And somebody's going to buy it out. And then... The man is going to sink his claws into it and it's going to be all fucked up. So these joyous days are coming to an end. There's no doubt in my mind. I'm just waiting. All right. Um, Okay. So anyway, before I um, left for the first hour for the staff meeting, that moment from the hockey game when I asked the guy um, if his player was okay, if his teammate was okay, his, hey, is your guy okay? And the guy looked at me and said, what the fuck do you think? And I thought to myself, what a, what a dumb thing to say. I mean, unless his like head came off, there, there's, there is doubt as to how he is. So I don't, I don't know, even if I did see it and I did not see the hit, I thought that that was a fair, thoughtful question on my part. Hey, is your teammate okay? And I didn't look at him and say, yeah, <laughs> is your teammate okay? I didn't do anything like that. For once, I was normal. And by the way, all the while, his coach, his assistant coach, is that Ben Simon, the guy who, when he was coach of the Griffins, he had a hard-on for me and wanted to kick my ass because he didn't like me talking to the players in the penalty box. He he was convinced that I was getting them to fight his players. You idiot. God damn it. So dumb. So I think what you have there is that hockey player is a little bit dumb and was super pissed off at the time. And he, he just took it out on this old man right here. Is your guy okay? What the fuck do you think? And I just looked at him like this. Like, I was shocked. I didn't know what to say. I go, well, I didn't see it. So is he okay? Nick in the arena says, easy, going to make more work. Uh, by making us reverse the doors to the home team. I kind of was able to interpret what you wrote, but you wrote it kind of fucked up. All right. 
Um, we were talking earlier about uh, the Lions. There was a lot of football that we have to talk about. Amazing things that took place. Hopefully, Megan won't tell us how bored she is. Let's get into the Illinois Rutgers game. Illinois down by one. They're trying to kick a field goal to win the game. Just as the Illinois is about, uh, the Illinois kicker is about to kick it, something happens. This is for eight wins. This is into the win. Machowski, 58 yards. All right. And they blow it dead. Okay, so what happened? Okay, he missed badly, but they blew the whistle. Rutgers was like, they called a timeout just before the ball was snapped to, uh, it's called icing the kicker. Now he's got to get his brain right again. He's already executed the kick once. He's got to, now he's got to kick it again. But... He did go through with the kick, as you saw, and he missed it terribly. The coach from Illinois says, you know, you missed that one so badly that now I'm convinced you actually cannot make this kick. So he puts his quarterback and his offense back out there and says one last shot to try to score a touchdown or get us at least closer. You know where this is going, don't you? Seven to keep this alive. Rucker showing blitz. Double A gap blitz. They bring the house. Here's the throw. Hit as he throws. It's caught by Bryant. First down. Oh, 15, 10. House call. <laughs> Touchdown. Pat Bryant. From- okay. That's fantastic. Holy shit. Is that great? You think you're icing the kicker and they put the offense back out and they score a touchdown? (laughs) Meanwhile, Missouri taking on Mississippi State. Missouri has the game won. They're leading 39 to 20. They are at the Mississippi State one yard line. They are going to take a knee for the uh, last minute and 26 seconds and run out the clock. But the coach of Missouri notices Mississippi State is still talking shit. Now, this is going to require some lip reading, but just know that the coach of Mississippi State says, Hey, Mississippi State, hey, Mississippi State. Shut the fuck up or I'm going to score. Okay, hardly any audio in this one. And you don't need it. Watch. Hey, 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 Mississippi State. Hey, hey, Mississippi State. Let me back that up. There it is. One more time. State man, Robbie Ware. Hey. Watch this. Hey. Together while Mississippi working. State. The PGA Mississippi Tour State. Shut the fuck week. up or I'm going to score. Shut the, the fuck up or I'm going to score. Game. Says it twice. This week. That's great. Hey, Mississippi State. Shut the fuck up or I'm going to score. My God. That is great. NBA game, final score, Philadelphia and the LA Clippers. The Clippers win 125 to 99. However, they might want to work on the font for the word final because the F and the I are so close together that it looks like anal. (laughs) 
Thank you to Chris D for all these outstanding moments in sports. You're part of what makes the podcast great. The partic- the participation by you uh, makes it fun to talk about. Thank you for that. Uh, Kenny doesn't like that the coach said, uh, shut the fuck up or I'm going to score. Coach, you're not out there on the field. Give some credit to your players. Maybe he's saying like it's his decision. Thanks as always to the key sponsors that make this podcast go. Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. 616-532-6600. They are the best. They can work on your they can work on your car, your EV, your hybrid. If you need a loaner car, they have free loaner cars for you for their customers. If you don't need the loaner car, that's fine too. Uh, You can do early bird drop-off, late bird pickup, pay over the phone. It's awesome. Their website is ervines.com, ervines.com. Smack dab in the middle of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Join the thousands of satisfied customers who've gotten their car repaired or maintained by Irvines, ervines.com. 30-plus years of growing and serving the public. A and E heating and cooling. This is the home of Joe Martinez, who again is ducking my bet. I gave him the weekend's bets. I'm giving you the Vegas odds, the the Vegas points. I'm giving you Chicago and ten and a half to you, dick bag, for one hundred dollars. If you win that one, I'll give you the chance to double your money. Or pay nothing. Double or nothing bet. Let's just say, Joe Martinez, the Bears either win outright or they cover. You win $100. And then Saturday, I'm giving you your vaunted Wolverines and 20 and a half points. Double or nothing. Now, if I win Thursday, that means the same thing goes. You'd have to have your Michigan team win either outright or cover just to get back to zero. At the end of the day, you suck. 616-516-8579. If you don't take this bet, you're the biggest bitch in America. 616-516-8579. You have to December 1 to reach out to this bitch and tell him, a, uh, first of all, take the bet. Second of all, uh, book him to come to your house and tell him he's a puss for not taking the bet, and he will work on your furnace with a free tune-up until December 1. Call and schedule, 616-516-8579. O'Neal in the shot here, scratching his handsome face. Uh, finally, the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. From anywhere in the U.S., buy now, refinance later, 231-332-6505. That's 231-332-6505. Uh, until mortgage rates come down, interest rates come down, you can still get into your home loan uh, as fast as possible and start shopping for your house. Okay, and eventually when those rates come down, the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage will work with you and make sure that you are in the lower rate. But if you want to get in a house now, by all means, first-time home buyers go to the front of the line. Love my friends at the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. The tallest woman in the world is Ramisa Gelgi. The shortest woman in the world is Giadi Amji. They're from different uh, countries. And to honor um, the anniversary of the Guinness Book of World Records, these two got together and are creating one of the most iconic pictures you are ever going to see. 
It's the type of picture that you could just stare at for hours. Uh, thank you to... God, who sent this to me on Facebook? Thank you. You know who you are. Sorry I'm forgetting, but I didn't write it down. Rumesa Kelgi is seven foot one. Giati Amji is two foot one. She's two foot one. In this picture, Gelgi is holding Amji. Gelgi is seven foot one. Amji is two foot one. Here you go. Wow. It uh, appears like a person. It's like young Andre the Giant in drag holding uh, one of those American Girl dolls. That's what it looks like to me. Young Andre the Giant in drag holding one of those dolls. Wow. If this isn't proof that aliens are amongst us, then I don't I don't know what to tell you. Matt asks, do you think they scissored? I think I actually have a clip here of this. There they are. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Wow, look at that. My God. Hi. Meeting Johnny for the first time ever was wonderful. She's the most gorgeous lady. I was waiting to... This is the little one talking. To meet her for a long time. I'm kidding. Okay, she's from another country. She said, uh, but it was good to look up to Ramesa, even though she is so much taller than most. I'm so glad they came to our planet. This is very nice of them, and they're so sweet. These two monsters. Hey, it's Eric Zane for one of my favorite sponsors, UncommonGoods.com. Now, when you shop at UncommonGoods.com, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. UncommonGoods.com have searched all around the globe to get some of the most amazing makers of handcrafted products that are made in small amounts. Shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Seriously, just go check out the selection from all the different types of amazing products and gifts that you can get at uncommongoods.com. From holiday host and hostess gifts to the coolest finds for kids to hits for everyone from book lovers to diehard sports fans. Just shop around. I'm telling you, the folks who get the gifts purchased through UncommonGoods.com are always going away satisfied and happy and giving you a look like, how did you think of this amazing, awesome gift? Basically, all you need to do is go to UncommonGoods.com and I'm going to give you 15% off your next gift. All you have to do is go to uncommongoods.com slash 
Zane. Uncommongoods.com slash Zane for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods. We're all out of the ordinary. Okay, there she is. She's holding a teacup. That's the size of the of the of the thimble in Monopoly. That's the same teacup. This is a really special year for Guinness World Records. Not only is it our twentieth Guinness World Records. I need these two doing things together, like uh, playing football or, or fighting. You know, or maybe running running with the bulls hand in hand. That's that's what we need these two to be doing. Okay. Wow. Ah. Maze and Blue says they look like a couple characters from Men in Black. They are. They really are. Like in real life. Becky says, I'm so going to hell for all the thoughts running through my head about them. Uh, Jeremy says she looks like Lurch more than intern Lurch. You may notice the size of uh, Ramesa's ears there. She actually holds a record. Like they measured all different parts of Ramesa's body. This guy did, this Craig Glenday, to determine like biggest ears, tallest woman, Today, but we're beginning the celebrations for the 70th anniversary of the book. Uh, so how better to celebrate than to unite two of the most iconic record holders we have, uh, Rumesa and Jyoti, the world's tallest and shortest living women. Wow. They, okay. They have to get the size of her vagina. I mean, we need, we need full investigation on this. I mean, her labia alone could probably make 10 footballs. Come on. And to think that the guy, the uh, she's seven foot one. The tallest person ever is that uh, Robert Lodlow or whatever his name. I think he was like eight foot seven. I mean, that's a, that's a full on, she's a full on giant. Holy shit. Uh, uh, Jeremy's thinking the same thing that I'm thinking. She has to have a deep poon. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, it's, it's cavernous, you know, you could park your car in there. Maureen says, imagine the tall one's feet easy. Yeah. I don't know if I could get behind that. Uh, it's not all feet. You know, there, some feet can be pretty screwed up. I don't know if I could, if I could do that. Um, I guess that, uh, the little one. Okay. So Ramesa Galgi is, uh, is, is the tall one holds the title of the world's largest hands for a female, longest fingers for a female, longest ears for a females, longest back for a female and previously held the title of tallest living female. So she's not even the tallest. Jyati is, uh, she is from the. Uh, she's from India. Dots, not feathers. She turned 18 in 2011. I had no idea. She looked like she was like 80. She has a, uh, she is a primordial dwarf. That is another. Um, and then it says parentheses uh, on the Wikipedia. It's a primordial dwarf parentheses monster slash alien. I think she's married. She's a model and an actress. Didn't I read somewhere she was married? I thought she was married. Um, she was in body shock in 09. She was in Big Boss 6. She was in American Horror Story, the episode titled Freak Show. And she was on a show on TLC in 2020. Fuck me. I just got the urge to throw her. 
Yeah, I, I can't say for sure if she is married. Uh, I'm going to see. Yeah, um, her husband. Okay, I think she is actually married. Um, uh, her husband is someone that some of you might be aware of. If you're familiar, um, with pro wrestling, there is a guy who used to go by the name of the great Kali, who I think is like seven feet tall. Also from the country of India. And you, you're going to think I'm making this shit up here. But it's the shortest woman in the world, 30-year-old actress, Jyoti Amji, and her husband, wrestler great Kali. And here he is. He's like handling her. That's his wife. All right. Now, all right. How uh there's so many, so many questions we have here. And it's all about being intimate. Now, he no doubt, uh, I need to know exactly how tall he is. Great Kali height. Okay, he's seven foot one. Like, this is the great Kali. That's how big the great Kali is. Are you telling me he's married to that little lady? All right, um... Yeah, we gotta we gotta know what what happens because there's no his his ding dong can't you know you can't do that. I mean that would be uh, that would cause a, a terrible injury. I don't even think that um, you know th- there can be any finger banging. I think that that would cause all sorts of disruptions that. Maize and Blue says, talk about just the tip. No, I, I don't think so. I don't think you're going to even do the tip. Bob says, isn't the great Kali 50-ish? Yeah, he's about that old. Uh, Kenny suggests pedophilia. I, I don't know. She's of age. This has nothing to do with that. Wow. Uh, we learned something on the show here. I We need to look uh, look into this more. We need more information about the relationship between the great Kali and the two foot one inch monster that is is the uh, the wife of this giant. God damn. He could stick her entire body up his asshole. He could do, she could do a prostate exam with those buck teeth. If she turns, if she turns him on, then you can't say children don't because she looks like a child. I don't think she looks like a child at all. I think she looks like uh, a gorgeous female who just happens to be little. Look it. She doesn't look like a child at all. She looks just like a grown adult woman. And look at that look on Kali. You know what's on his mind. Oh, yeah. I mean, like his dick has got to be about the same size as her. This is quite a revelation on the Eric Zane Show podcast. Bob says, this is the third time I've heard this story, but no one said anything about them being married. Well, look, I'm just telling you what I see. Shortest woman in the world, 30-year-old actress, Giati Amji, and her husband wrestling great, a wrestler, great Kali. Great Kali wife. Okay, this might be bullshit. And you know what? I'm kind of glad. No, I I guess I can't say that. 
Maybe it's bullshit. I'm getting mixed stories. Well, let's just not do any more research on this and just say that he is married. The great Kali is married to this chick. I think actually the great Kali's wife is a normal sized human being. That may have all been bullshit. Here's the great Kali in this. He's wearing a crown. That's his daughter. And this is his wife. The great Kali is not having sex with a two foot one inch chick. Indian women, by the way, are beautiful. They're just gorgeous. They're so pretty. They're not as pretty as Armenian women, but they're very pretty. Okay, so, I mean, bullet dodged, really, if you think about it. I mean, who wants to go through the rest of their day thinking that the great Kali is uh, jamming his ding-dong inside of the littlest woman on the planet? I know I don't. Okay. Uh, Moving on. One more sports thing to show you. Uh... I know I'm running the risk of getting uh, booze that this is boring, but uh, I just wanted to share this too. This is uh, this is another amazing ending to a football game. The Washington Commanders are down by seven, 33 ticks on the clock. Washington quarterback, I don't remember his name, doesn't matter. Watch this. Leash at the quarterback. Half a minute, no timeouts. Daniels throws down the sideline for Terry. have just scored that late touchdown with barely any time left. The Washington Commanders have done it. All they have to do is kick the extra point for the tie. Low snap. It is no good. Oh. And the worst special teams day in history oh. has a fitting finish. Oh, no. Watch this kicker. The second this guy kicks it, he knows he wouldn't have made it from two yards. For the tie. Low snap. It is no good. (laughs) And the worst special teams day in history has a fitting finish. Oh, fuck me. Oh, that that's bad. This guy writes, wow, that's as bad as the college drunks kicking during during college game day, without a doubt. Oh, my God. You must see that video. Click on the uh, show notes, and you will um, be able to see it if you're just listening to the audio podcast. Uh, Aram says, oh, nice, another fight in the chat. Who was fighting? I I did not detect that. Um, God, I hope not. Or actually, I do. Uh, we had what a week because of all of the drama in the chat. Uh, if if I, there's a day in the chat when um, the inmates are having a rebellion, uh, that's that's a winner to your old pal EZ. And I, I, I detect nothing by, uh, by any of what I see. And now maybe I can't see all of the chat. I think I do a fairly good job in being able to see all of it. But uh, if there is a fight a Bruin, trust me, I want to know about it. That makes me very happy. I'm just glad it's not me. I try to stay out of these things. I don't want anybody uh, thinking fucked up shit that I am treating them poorly. At the end of the day, I want you all to be in here. And if you're not uh, getting along great, 
which makes me happy. I want you fighting. I want you here talking shit to each other and letting them know what's going on. And the only way that that can happen, and I might as well throw this out there now, everybody is going to have to unblock everybody. I'm going to need to see the tempers rising between people. And we can't have that bloodlust. If you're there in the chat and you've blocked someone. So it is of uh, my urging that everyone in the chat unblock everyone so that you can see the hatred. The more that that happens, the more fun we have watching people come unglued. So if anyone is blocked, uh, I have now announced that it is mandatory that everyone must be unblocked. Uh, You run the risk of not being able to participate if there are still people blocked in the chat. I know secretly that you want to do that. Jeremy writes, I just want to see Kenny sit Corey make out. Yeah, that, that, um, I think you're going to need to rephrase that. He, he writes, Kenny and Corey make out. No, I want them fighting. I did find out that Kenny has unblocked Corey and Tophus. All right. And that's a good thing. I'm glad that that has happened. I also have learned that Stevie has unblocked Joe Martinez so that she can see all of him talking shit about Michigan and how much he despises the Lions. Well done to all of you. I appreciate that. So Tophus and Corey, if you want to say something horrible about Kenny, he is going to see it now. So have at it and enjoy yourselves. I heard through the grapevine that Kenny made a long post on my Reddit page. I have not seen it, but I heard it looked like it took him about three or four hours to type it. And in that, uh, he announced that um, he takes all of this very seriously, and he does not like it when you pick on him, and that he is 100% truly angry and upset, and it breaks his heart when you pick on him. Aram says, Kenny has a group of supporters. If Corey and Tophus want to throw down. Yeah, I agree with that. Kenny's contingency is far larger than anything Corey and Tophus can make up. I would say that those two assholes are on their own. No one in this group wants anything terrible to happen to Kenny. And you fucking assholes are just rude. That's why Kenny wants to see your words so he can fucking rub them right in your face. I can't even say it. Bob says, I can just copy and paste everything Tophus says for you, Kenny. Well, first of all, you don't need to because they are not blocked anymore. Second of all, Kenny says, I mean, if you want to get blocked, go for it. Aram says, I think Corey is just angry and takes it out on Kenny. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what his problem is. These two animals just love trying to be miserable to him. And I, for one, cannot stand for that. Bob says, I just want to see you verbally destroy Tophus. Eric, check out the Friday clips that I made. All right. I'll play your silly game. I will check out your handiwork. Clips. Hmm. 
Okay, here we go. This one is titled Kayfabe. I think he knows more than you think he knows about what's hilarious. And I think it's kind of like a little, uh, uh, what do they call that in wrestling? Kayfabe, kayfob. You know, like in pro wrestling, when the two guys are staring at each other in the squared circle, and they kind of, they can communicate via just a glance of their eyes, and they know where the other one's going to go. Okay? He senses what I'm doing, I think. This is my theory. And then kind of creates this whole narrative that allows for a very effective bit of theater that the average person is not even aware that all right a cut off yeah and i and i believe that more than ever and that's fucking great aram says listeners of the show should not be allowed to pile on when eric makes fun of a listener in this case kenny So what he's suggesting there is if we're having a good time and laughing at Kenny uh, for, hey, (laughs) you got pretty smile, I'm going to give you a follow. That's one thing. But then out of the blue, the uh, Aram is suggesting that out of the blue, all of a sudden somebody says something horrible about Kenny. That's what his point is. Aram says that would fix the bullying problems. I guess there's another clip that needs to be played too. Okay. Now these are new to me. I barely remember what I say on this show. Remember, and I've said that many times. Uh, Megan says he was legit mad. Oh, without a doubt. I, without a doubt. But he also knows that it was fantastic. <laughs> Kenny says, he writes, <laughs> yeah, truth be told, I got super pissed. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. He made like, God damn it, look at all these clips he made. One, two, three, four. Yeah, he wants me to play the Amanda one. And... Wow, how many did you make? Are these all yours? Yeah, I have... um, Okay, this is the one he wants me to play. Shut up. Can you shut up for the rest of the day? Uh, I was joking with Amanda said, did your dog take a dirt nap? Those are jokes that were made by others. But trust me, you're annoying as fuck. Shut up. You realize you're like never here, and when you are, I just want you to shut up. God, you're a pain in the ass. (laughs) You really are. (laughs) The beginning of that. Shut up. She's okay. We're in here and the inability to read the room is just off the rails with her because I'm talking about Jeremy and his dog passes away and, and I start to talk about it and she blurts up. I bet his dog's dead. And I'm like, fucking, why do you do that? Why does that always happen? (laughs) Shut up. I just cried laughing so hard watching you react to that, man. (laughs) Uh, Concerning 
Tulfus and Corey bullying. Aram says it's bullshit. They didn't think of the insult. Eric came up with the insult. They're just joke taggers. So I think it's weird that, um, like when, when I, when the moment first happened with, uh, creep gate, when Kenny's like, you, you, you get a, you get a follow cause you're pretty smile. That whole thing is the gag. And it started as just an observation. <laughs> and when I see the aggressiveness, I, because you guys have such a history, I, I definitely see Aram's point. And it makes me wonder why, because, you know, I mean, Kenny's an adorable person. You re, you got to, you're missing out. I mean, he's a lovable dude. He's a ride or die. And I, I think that, uh, I think that belligerent attitude kind of goes against what you're made of. Cause I think you guys are like better people than that. You know, both of you, I think, I think you, uh, I think you can both be very, very nice. And for some reason you actually uh, like take it out on him personally. You know what I mean? It's just a little much. I, I, I agree with, uh, I agree with Aram. Kenny's a good guy. So anyway, that's just me. I mean, I, I'm glad you're here, but I don't, I don't want you to be so mean to him anymore. I want you to be, I want you to have fun and, and I mean, it's fun to, it's fine to like the elbow thing and laugh along, but you guys always go off the fucking deep end and you say really horrible shit about the guy. Uh, Aram says, Eric is the target of all my insults. I never direct them at listeners. What insults? You're horrible at insulting people. I've never been insulted by you. Are you kidding me? How could I be insulted by you? Anyway, kidding. Now I sound like free beer. All right. Regardless, the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage already talked about them. They're great. Get a mortgage. Uh, TC Paintball. Rick wants to do December 15th, but I cu- I can't. I can't do it. I've got a uh, basketball game. But he wants to do a paintball war very soon. Stay tuned. In the meantime, if you or your pals want to get something together that's uh, that's a lot of fun, workplace team building, maybe the kids in the neighborhood, maybe your buddies, bachelor party, you name it, think about TC Paintball. Absolute legends tcpaintballgr.com I've been after Rick to get a new dog. I'm hoping he gets one soon. I know Rick and dogs kind of like um is a touchy subject because um Rick made all those comments that pissed everybody off and uh we're still feeling the effects of that. Trying to put some distance between it, but I, I, I don't care what he said. He's wonderful. All right. And I love Rick. Uh, reach out tcpaintballgr.com. I have a licensed independent insurance agent slash broker. It is Frank Fuss. He can help you with um, insurance in the marketplace, healthcare.gov. Enrollment is going on right now. Not to mention a life insurance policy for you and yours. You absolutely need to do that if you have family. Even if you don't have family, you should do that. Okay? Especially when you're young and in shape. Okay? You're taking care of yourself. There's nothing wrong with you. You're going to get great insurance for very little money each month. Ask Frank about that. And then, of course, he is the expert on Medicare and Social Security. You can get more information at buyinsurancehere.com and set up an appointment. If by chance you reach out to Frank and he does not get back to you within 24 hours, please tell me so I can rub that in his fucking face. Uh, Reach out, buyinsurancehere.com. Aram says this chat is a great distraction from the podcast. Well, it's a double-edged sword, I would say. 
that is my lifeline to interacting with people as they watch the show. And it's a good way to do it. It has to be there. Uh, I enjoy the uh, back and forth. So I, uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. Cole says Rick's comments don't piss everyone off. Just the pussies, he says. Uh, as we look at Bruce, he is sleeping with his eyes open. That is hysterical. Folks, as always, you've been an outstanding audience. Thank you for being here. I have the asshole of the day, though. Almost forgot. Friday's asshole of the day was Matt Gates. I wouldn't have guessed that if you held a gun to my head because I don't remember this shit. Uh, does anyone here have a nomination for the asshole of the day. Oh, I know who it is. It is uh, forward for the Iowa Wild, Reese Johnson, for screaming at me during the fucking hockey game. What did I do to deserve that? I asked how your guy was, you dick. Fucking asshole. Fuck you. Uh, Kenny says, asshole today, Eric, for making us think that huge guy was destroying the world's shortest woman's vagina with his giant schlong. Look, I didn't mean to do that. I was just checking in. I was like, running with the story. That It wasn't accurate. Uh, Tophis gets a nomination. Twice. Uh, Cole says, asshole of the day, Tophis for not being here spreading liberal hate. Yeah, you know what? That's interesting. The, um, the person who is, is it that often that you get someone who is liberal like that? And, um, you know, so hateful. I thought that the, uh, the the liberals have said that, oh, we're all peaceful. We love everybody. You can't be mean to Kenny, for God's sake. Jesus. All right, folks. Thank you so much for being here. As always, you uh, are the best. Uh, no complaints from me about anyone here. I'll talk to you on Patreon. Kenny says, go spend an hour on Reddit. I am not going to lie to you. I didn't read it. I'm not going to read it. It's just too long. I, I just can't do it. I can't devote that much time to something like that. Just know I love you. And that's the end of it. Talk to you later, folks. Thank you. And bye-bye.